All right, hello everyone. This is Paula Wallace with New Mexico Junior College. I am your instructional designer. I'm going to talk to you today about modularizing your Canvas course. A New Mexico Junior College has taken the position that they would like all of their courses to look very similar when students log on. Uh, one of the things that we know happens uh, when students have a similar experience in every one of their online classes is that they have a, a higher retention rate and they have a better success rate going uh, from program to program or from class to class. And so what we would like for you to do is to take a look at how we've set up this course and how we would like for you to uh, set up your course um, in, in a similar way. Uh, we know that not all courses are gonna look exactly like uh, what we have uh, exampled you here, but we, we also think that you can get pretty close. We also know that you're not gonna have uh, each course is going to be course specific, which, meaning that that um, you may be teaching multiple courses and they're going to have different looks to them. Um, but here's what we would like for you to do. We would like for you to, uh, of course, modularize your course, uh, use the modules tab, and uh, we would like for you to have a course information module, and we would like for you to, to look at uh, putting a module zero or um, you could also call that unit zero, chapter zero, week zero, however it is that you design your course uh, and have your students uh, experience the content. Um, I just happen to use module zero as a, a topic because I'm not actually using a book for teaching right now. Um, so I modularized. All right, so course information, what does it mean? What we would like for you to do is to put all of the course information in one spot, meaning your Start Here page, your Getting Started page, whatever it is that you call it, would go underneath the course information module. The next thing that we have here is a teacher biography, and it's called Meet Your Instructor, and I'm gonna actually walk through each one of these here in just a moment, but I'm gonna give you an outline to begin with. The next thing that we'd like for you to, to include into your course information module is a syllabus. And then uh, I would argue that you, um, it would be appropriate to put a schedule in your, in your uh, course information module, but that is up to you. We know that a lot of you are putting a schedule in your syllabus. I like to give my students an, a, a separate schedule so that it, it's kind of like a, um, a quick start page for looking at their schedule without having to go to the, to the syllabus to find it. I have also in this course information module, I have put some information about the Respondus Lockdown Browser. If you're using the Respondus Lockdown Browser in your course, I strongly suggest that you add this to your course information module. And again, I'm going to go through each one of these tabs here in just a moment and show you what's in it. We'd also like for you to put the student support um, tab into your course. and. Uh, Let's get started and see what each one of these things are within this course information module. Okay, so the first thing that we have here is called a Start Here page. Now, this Start Here page is specific to my course and the way I teach. I have done a screencast here showing students how to get around. Um, I also have provided this in text format um, by doing, an audio visual representation and a text representation. I have um, addressed ADA compliances. At the very least, we're asking faculty to give students a Start Here page in text. So, um, however, it is that you would like for students to uh, get around in your course, we would like for you to provide that with them in directions. Um, One of the things that I have done is I have asked students not to use their global assignments tab um, just because it's confusing to them and, and really they need to be going through their modules tab to get to their assignments. Um, and if you'll notice over here, students in my course cannot get to their discussions, their assignments, or their quizzes. We only have, I only give them an opportunity to get through those activities through going through the modules. Okay. All right, so the next thing that I have inside this course information module is called My Math Lab. Now, not all of you are using My Math Lab. Some people are using Aflia, some others are using Inlinea. Um, maybe the physics lab that uh, comes with your textbook uh, 
and so forth and so on. But a lot of you are you are not using any ancillary device uh, to uh, support your textbook at all. That's fine. But if you are using an ancillary product, you need to give your students the um, directions about how to use that inside their course information module. Okay. The next thing that's on the list is a Meet the Instructor. Now, I have given you an example of a biography that I created about myself. Um, I would, if you're teaching fully online, I would really ask that you create a developed biography that so you can uh, have your students create an emotional connection to you so that uh, uh, retention is better and grades are better. There's a lot of research about online learning that talks about students being emotionally engaged in a course um, creates better retention for that online learner and uh, they have better success rate through programs. Now, what does that mean to you? That means to you as an instructor that you should have a developed biography of who you are as a person. Um, I certainly want you to do what's what you feel appropriate doing, but it's, at, at the very least, you could tell students who you are as, an, as a professional, uh, what your edu educational background is, and give them a little bit about, uh, about your uh, personal and home life. Um, it doesn't have to be anything um, expounding or anything like that, but um, just give them something that helps them connect to you as a human being. Again, that harkens back to increased retention for the online student. The next thing that I placed in this course information module is a syllabus. Now I'm linking into Dallas Holsey's, uh, our department chair for English. Uh, I'm linking into his syllabus because I'm not currently teaching for New Mexico Junior College, but that's uh, what we'd like for you to do is to link into your syllabus that we have at the NMJC site. The next thing that I have in here is called a schedule. If you'll see, if you'll take a look at this schedule, I have a, a very detailed schedule for students. When I'm teaching, that's what I like to provide for my students so that they will have it at a glance what their schedule is and what is expected of them week to week. Um, and it gives them a road, road map of what the course is going to look like. All right, so the next thing that I, I have inside this course information module is a lecture that I created about Respondus Lockdown Browser. If you're using Respondus Lockdown Browser, I highly suggest you putting this lecture in your course. What I've done here is I've taught the student how to download the product and thus um, go into Respondus Lockdown Browser on their desktop, which takes them over to Canvas and then has them log in to take a, an exam. One of the things that we're finding um, at the Distance Learning Help Desk uh, is that students are downloading the Respondus Lockdown Browser software, but they are not realizing that they have to actually exit Canvas and then go to their desktop and thus then log into the Respondus Lockdown Browser from their desktop to travel out to Canvas. So this lecture gives them all of that information in a visual format. So I um, have done the homework for you. So if you wanna just adopt this into your um, class, the lecture's there for you created. It's, yes, it'll be my voice, but it gives them a good um, guideline about how to, to download the software. Now, the next thing that we have on this course information module list is the actual directions of Respondus Lockdown Browser. So, and then um, in this, they can also do the download there. Okay. The next thing that we have in the course information module is called a student support link. There's research to suggest that students who have resources within their shell, their course shell, those students are more likely to, to use um, those products. As an example, if you put the tutorials inside the course, they're going to use it. Same thing for their, their, their um, tutoring site. 
their library, their help desk, and their contact information and all that is in here. So I'm going to actually walk you through what's in this student support site and I'm going to ask that you uh, put this link into your course so that students will have um, access to these resources inside their course shell. So the first thing that we have so inside the student support shell is the Canvas tutorials for students where they can go get to get tutored on um, how to turn in an assignment, how to do a discussion, how to use their inbox, etc. Okay. The next thing that's inside the student support site is um, a link to BrainFuse, which is their online tutoring site. And there's the directions about how to use it and to actually log on to it. The next thing that we have here is their on-campus tutoring resource. Okay, it tells them that in Manser Hall, um, there's on-campus tutoring going on, it gives them their hours, etc. The next thing in the student support site is their library information where they can actually go out to the library and um, have their link to their site there. Okay, the next thing that we have inside the student support link is their information to get a hope of get a hold of their distance learning help desk. They can either email us or call us and uh, they have the information at their fingertips within their course shell. The next thing that they have is their distant, learn distant learning contact information to their Dean of Distance Learning, uh, the instructional designer who's me, Charlie, Stephen, and uh, Terry Blandon. So um, students can have that contact information at their fingertips. The next thing within the student support link is how to configure their computer and the browsers that they need to use Canvas. Again, we've offered them some more support here with the needed plugins that, that they should have to uh, successfully use Canvas. Okay. So that's the end of the student support link. The next thing that we have is module zero. I'm going to end this lecture for now. Um, and I'm going to actually go through module zero in a separate video. Um, so I'll see you in part two.